The first Volkswagen Golf GT was launched in 2015 and it was a big hit with customers. So big in fact that VW couldn't build them quick enough, leaving some people waiting many months for their new car. Since then, the fully electric Volkswagen ID3 has come onto the scene, but so has a new generation Golf. And there's still big demand from company car users in particular for plug-in hybrids. Step forward, the all new Golf GTE. The new car has a lot to live up to. The world has moved on since the old model first hit showrooms and people have higher expectations of plug-in hybrid technology these days. Luckily, the new Golf GTE has improved in virtually every area, sporting a brand new look in line with the latest Mark 8 Golf. It's more spacious, more economical and more powerful than ever before. Right, let's jump straight in with the new powertrain. The Golf GTE combines a 1.4 litre petrol engine with an electric motor to produce 242 horsepower, which is exactly the same as the pure petrol version of this car, the Golf GTI. The GTE will do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.2 seconds, which is only a few tenths slower than its sportier sibling. The reason it's a tad slower is because of the 13 kilowatt hour battery. That will give you up to 39 miles of electric range, but also adds 176 kilos of weight to the car, which would be like carrying around two fully grown adults in the back all the time. Now, in a straight line, you don't really notice the difference. The GTE drives just as well as the other Golfs in the lineup. But let me show you where you do notice a difference. I'm going to do something that the camera operator isn't expecting in a moment. There's a corner coming up and... <laughs> Grace, where are you going? <laughs> and that is where you do notice the extra weight, pulling you away from the corner and making the car feel less agile. Don't get me wrong, the feedback you get through the steering wheel is great and the car is easy to position on the road. But if having fun is more important to you, then the GTE just isn't as sharp as the lighter, slightly faster GTI. As a plug-in hybrid, you get a range of extra driving modes on top of the usual eco, comfort and sport settings. As well as e-mode for electric only driving, you can choose to hold the charge in the battery for later on in your journey. Or you can even use the engine to charge it up as you drive. I wouldn't recommend this though, as it's horribly inefficient. There's a hybrid mode too. This lets the car work out when it's best to use the battery power and when it makes more sense to use the engine. When the battery power is depleted, this is the mode to use. The other thing we'd say about driving the GTE is that the engine isn't quite as refined as we'd like it to be. Yes, it accelerates quickly and yes, it works well with the six-speed automatic gearbox. But when you put your foot down, it's quite noisy and not necessarily in a good way. Personally, I prefer sticking the car into E-mode, which works all the way to 90 miles per hour. And that way you can just cruise around and enjoy the peace and quiet. Prices for the new Golf GTE start at around £36,000, which is a pretty lofty figure compared to rival plug-in hybrids. However, as standard, you get unique 17-inch alloy wheels, automatic LED headlights, heated foldable door mirrors, keyless entry, adaptive cruise control, three-zone climate control, and funky ambient interior lighting too. There's only one trim level, which means you have to pay more for any extra kit that takes your fancy. The leather upholstery seen here costs more than £2,000, although you do get heated and cooled front seats thrown in. A head-up display will set you back £625 and a rear view camera is priced at 300 quid. Want a panoramic sunroof? That will be a grand. Inside, it's a bit of a mixed bag if I'm honest. The overall look of the interior is slick and the build quality is decent, but some of the materials like here and here, for instance, feel a bit cheaper than they look. The storage is good though. We've got a large box with a lid on here and a gap next to the gear selector for something like a smartphone. Then there's space for a couple of hot drinks between the front seats and the door bins will easily fit a water bottle or a flask. 
Having said that, I'm not impressed with the infotainment system at all. For a start, the analog dials have been replaced by a digital setup behind the steering wheel, and weirdly, everything's quite small, so it can be difficult to read when you're driving. And it's the same issue over here. VW says the screen is 10 inches wide, but if you look at the gaps, it's actually smaller than that. Then when it comes to using it, the software is slow, the menus are confusing, and look at where they've put the touch sensitive climate controls. So you can be hunting around for the radio and then suddenly the temperatures turn down by accident. So all in all, it doesn't feel like VW have properly thought things through in here, which is unusual to say the least. Annoying as the screen can be, you do at least get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, so you can avoid the fiddly infotainment issues to a degree. The Golf GTE gets the basics right too. Passengers will be comfortable throughout with more than enough head and leg room for tall adults in the back. Be warned though that the boot only measures 273 litres, which is a whopping 108 litres less than you'll find in other versions of the Golf, and quite a bit less than the pure electric ID3. The reason it's so much smaller is that the battery has to go somewhere, and underneath the boot floor is the best place for it. While it might seem stingy, you'll have to make this compromise with virtually every plug-in hybrid car on sale. Now, you'll see there's some charging cables. The GTE comes with two as standard, one for a home wall box and one with a normal three pin plug at the end. Use this one and you'll charge the batteries up in about five hours. Use this one and you'll get a full charge in around three hours, 40 minutes. The charging speed is capped at 3.6 kilowatts. So this is the fastest charge you'll ever get, even if you plug it into a socket capable of more. A full charge at home should cost less than £2, and you can slash this even further by charging at night on an off-peak tariff when electricity is cheapest. There are big savings to be had elsewhere too. As a plug-in hybrid, the Golf GTE qualifies for ultra-low company car tax, thanks to its electric range and official CO2 emissions of just 26 grams per kilometre. Road tax is cheaper than a normal petrol or diesel too, but the saving here is only a tenner per year. Hardly a deal maker if you're a private buyer rather than a company car driver. Working out if the Golf GT makes financial sense for you is tricky. It all depends really on that electric range. As we said earlier, VW claims up to 39 miles on a full battery, but in our experience, 30 miles is more realistic. You can forget the idea of doing 246 miles per gallon too. With the car in its normal hybrid mode, you can expect to see fuel economy of 35 to 40 miles per gallon or so. So if you do lots of short trips, say the school run or commuting to work, then the savings from running in e-mode most of the time could really add up. But if charging the battery every day isn't convenient, then you'll spend a lot of time relying on the petrol engine, carrying around a big battery pack for little reward. There's a lot to like about the Golf GTE. It's fast, it's spacious, and we've no doubt that it'll be dependable too. But with an asking price of £36,000, it's strayed into the premium end of the plug-in hatchback market, which puts it in direct competition with the Mercedes A-Class. Now, the A-Class is cheaper, offers more electric range, has a bigger boot, attracts less in company car tax, and, well, it's a Mercedes. Which is why when I look at the Golf GTE, all I can see is something of a missed opportunity. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when a new video goes live.